How's it going guys? Today I just wanted to go through everything that is a part of my A7S III camera rig. Now, you don't need to use an A7S III to create a similar rig. Really as long as you have a cage or some kind of mounting option for whatever camera you're using, most of these items should work. A few of them may just need tweak to match your camera. Now I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer that this rig is heavily, heavily inspired by DSLR Video Shooter. A lot of the equipment here is similar to his rig, so I wanted to recommend his channel to you if you wanted to see more rigs like this. Starting off with the camera itself, this is the A7S III. I've been using this camera for a couple years now and I still love it. I almost always pair it with the Sigma 24-70 2.8. That is a great duo that has worked for me in almost every scenario. But the thing that holds this whole rig together is the cage. The cage was made by Small Rig. I used to use a half cage, but once the rig started getting bigger, I really just needed something more sturdy. Mounted onto the bottom of the cage is the base plate made once again by Small Rig. Uh, the main function of this base plate is to hold the rods in place. These rods allow you to attach a variety of accessories to the rig, which we will go over in a moment. It is also nice because it gives you more options for mounting quick release plates to the bottom of the camera. Once the base plate is mounted, I slide the battery plate and lens support onto the rods. The battery plate will allow us to connect a V-mount battery to the back of the rig. This one's pretty simple, I mean you just slide the battery into place and then to remove it just push the button on the side. The battery I am using is the Kame TV 99 watt hour V-mount battery. There are fancier and larger V-mount batteries available, but I've had no complaints with this one so far. I don't always use the lens support, but if I'm putting filters and a matte box on the end of the lens, it gives me a little bit more peace of mind knowing that that support is there. So now that we have the main part of the rig put together, it's time to add the handles. Uh, I use a top handle and a grip on the side of the camera. There are quite a few handles available, but I like the looks and the functionality of these two. The side handle has a built-in cold shoe mount for small lights or microphones. Now, you may have noticed the NATO rail on the top of the cage. That is how I mount this handle to the cage itself. I also have a smaller one on the handle. That is how I mount my monitor. The monitor I've been using for years now is the Atomos Shinobi. I have really enjoyed using it. I found that a 5 inch monitor is a good mix between portability, uh, but still having a significant improvement over the built in monitor. To power this, I either use Sony MPF batteries or I use this adapter to plug it into the V mount. This is what I do most of the time, and I'm always surprised at how long the battery keeps the monitor on. Now, back to the other grip, I put my Sennheiser MKE 600 into the cold shoe mount. This microphone is a more recent addition, and I'm very impressed at its sound quality. But before this, I was actually just using a little Rode Video Micro. It is a very inexpensive microphone, but I have found as long as you are somewhat close to your subjects, it sounds pretty good for the price and size. The windscreen it comes with is also a huge bonus, so I still use it from time to time even though I have that newer microphone. Now the last part of my usual setup is the map box made by Small Rig. The main purpose of the map box is to be able to use rectangular filters, but I honestly haven't even bought one yet. Uh, let's be real, it just looks cool. Uh, the camera looks incomplete without the map box. Maybe that is a little bit vain, but perception is important. It's not nothing, especially to your clients. Plus the barn doors on the top are great for blocking lens flares, and the map box itself has actually protected my lens and camera more often than I expected. It's almost like a little shield on the front of the lens. Like I mentioned in a previous video, sometimes if the shoot requires it, I'll put this Axum Cineview on the rig to wirelessly transmit the video feed to a separate monitor. But most of the time I don't need it, and it starts to make the rig look too cluttered, so I don't really include it that often. Well that's everything, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more gear specific videos in the future, let me know. I don't know if I want to do a bunch of gear specific videos, uh, because I think a lot of people already do that, and I want to focus a lot more on the storytelling side of things, and how to make better videos. But at the same time, I'm kind of a gearhead and I love equipment and talking about equipment. Uh, so I'm going to try to find the balance between the two. But like I said, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video.